writing the book, there were a couple of things that were that were key to approaching um, this enormous event. One was that although I make no, I've never made any secrets about my politics. It was important that this is this is a book that's that's telling the revolution as a story, um, and therefore, while there are, of course, you know, um, the, the political discussion and, and a political um, texture is there, it is it is a, a narrative history, um, and to that extent, I was approaching it as much as anything as not just a story, but an extraordinary, strange story, um, and it's full of all the stuff. Of, of ripping yarns. It's, you know, daring do and camouflage and betrayal and love and cowardice and honor and so on and so forth. There were points where I was kind of gleefully aware that if I had indeed come up with this as, as a piece of fiction, my editor would quite properly have sort of said, that's a bit much, that's too on the nose, you need to dial that down. So the sheer scale of extraordinariness and the sheer kind of wild events in a couple of uh, a couple of cases. For example, the Kornilov uprising, the relations between Kerensky uh, heading the government at the time and Kornilov, this far-right general, this extraordinary concatenation of conspiracy, cock-up, um, you know, uh, secret agendas, miscommunication, uh, a kind of counter coup and coup by uh, by misunderstanding as well as intent you literally could not make it up one of the decisions i made quite early on was um, that i was going to try as far as possible not to focus on uh, an individual person or one or two individual people because then inevitably you turn it into much more of, um, of, of 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 that person's story than it was it was important to me that this is the story of the historical event, and that, of course, means uh, means more than one person, lots of people. Um, that said, inevitably, certain key players feature a lot. Sometimes, uh, people who are trying to sort of defend the legacy of the revolution, there there can on there can be a danger of hagiography. There can be a sort of sense of you know the the incredible insight of of Lenin and so on. Now, to be clear. You read the history. Lenin was, you know, a remarkable man and an extremely perspicacious one. But one of the things that was very striking and that I think made not just for historical interest but made for a, a more fascinating story is the things that, that that went wrong for him, the the misjudgments, the the points at which there was huge argument. Um, this was never history by fiat. This was history by kind of. Um, jostling argument and changed minds. You know, he changed his mind, they all did. The book begins with a quote from uh, a liberal historian uh, of Russia writing um, at the beginning of 1917. And the book that, that, I'm, that I'm quoting, the historian's book, ends by saying with a very kind of doleful um, uh, tenor, it is absolutely clear that this situation cannot continue, change must come. I think that there's, there's simply no question that the system was unsustainable um, at the beginning of 1917 in Russia. The question was what happened next. The question was what was going to happen to this system, what was going to replace it, and how. That's the key question. So was the revolution inevitable in, in, in the outlines of what happened? Absolutely not. One of the things that's terrifying is uh, so many points at which things could have got much, much worse and gone in a very different direction. But was an upheaval that changed the system fundamentally uh, inevitable? I balk at the word, but, you know, going to happen? Yes, I don't think there's much doubt about that. The debates have been endless, you know, essentially without Lenin could it have happened sort of thing. And I think that, I do think that there's, there's no, I don't think you can plausibly argue that he did not, his decisions did not have an enormous impact. Um, what was also interesting to me was um, the decisions that that could have had a big impact, the decisions that were made one way and that it would have taken a very small tweak of history to have quite a big effect in a different way. Um, um, uh, and some of the figures that don't necessarily loom large in, in a lot of the histories, but who with the tiniest kink of history could have loomed much larger. Martov, for example, uh, Maria Spiridonova, um, people like that. And on the other side of things, 
you know, uh, some of the great, um, the great counter-revolutionaries, um, you know, Kornilov, not intrinsically an immensely impressive figure of the right, but history put him in a position where he, he could very well have been, you know, a, a, a key decision-making player. There can be a kind of romanticized notion that, you know, you can't possibly write about somewhere unless you've been there. And the kind of contrarian in me um, sort of chafes against that and likes likes to sort of think that that's kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of poetic nonsense. And if you've read all the stuff, you know the facts, why can't, you know. But that any such kind of remnant was kind of humbled by, by, by going to St. Petersburg. And it is truly very difficult to express exactly why. There is something about, there was for me, something about inhabiting the, the city's scale, seeing the height of the skyline, being surrounded by these particular facades between which these events that I'd been writing and reading about had occurred that, that did absolutely change the book and that sent me back to the draft um, and, and groping in this very kind of um, exciting way to, to express this, I think, ultimately inexpressible, ineffable thing about the specificity of place. A lot to do with scale, to do with the distances, to do with how far you can see down these enormous boulevards and these very straight planned routes. Um, something to do with the particular pedestrian rhythm of a city in which if you keep walking, you keep coming up against canals. Something that wouldn't have occurred to me in the reading, but that made for a particular urban atmosphere. Um, I, I grope to put it into words, but I think that's okay. That's part of uh, that, that surplus, that thing which is inexpressible that you kind of grope for was absolutely there. And I was very um, both surprised and pleasantly surprised by the, the impact that, that, that being there did have on the book. In a way, the most important thing about uh, the Russian Revolution still now is both ludicrously simple and uh, and, and, and breathtakingly exciting, uh, which is that, you know, in an epoch in which we have been told for decades that there is no alternative, you literally have a moment, a glimmer, at which things were radically other. There was an apps, you know, there was an attempt to usher in something fundamentally different. Things were different once, things could be different again. I think in terms of what this, the writing of this book could, could carry through to, to, to when I write fiction, um, on the one hand, there's, there's, there's plenty of details of history. As I say, this is an extraordinary uh, story, an extraordinary set of circumstance. And as I was researching, I was constantly making notes in, 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 in the other notebook, in the notebook for future stories, you know, particular characters some of the religious sects that were thrown up with these incredible theologies uh, that I, I would have loved to write much more about but didn't have space and time. So there are uh, details of, of the history that I wouldn't be at all surprised if crop up in, in, in fiction from now on. Um, and in a more general sense, something about this, this this very powerful sense of kind of yearning. I think that's something w w which you, you feel all the way through the process of the revolution and preceding it, and, um, and that then combines with this, this sense of mourning that happens after it and after its degeneration. That sense of, 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 of sensucht is something that I have uh, felt for a long time, but was given a very powerful articulation um, by the revolution and by researching the revolution and I am certain I will return to it. I don't think there was any moment in which I, I, I realised to my surprise that I was admiring or had, had fundamentally changed my opinion about any of the, um, you know, the particularly well-known figures. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't become a fan of the Tsar or the Tsarina, for example. But what is true is that the more you read about them, um, it's not just a question of sort of unexpected pathos. You do end up with this kind of absolute fascination with some of these figures. I was left with what I can almost only describe as a kind of flabbergasted affection for Kerensky. Affection of him as a, as a sort of cultural figure. I mean, politically, you know, 
terrible, terrible things. This is not about being a fan of his politics. But he's such an extraordinary, compelling figure. Someone who, if you were to script, would seem like um, someone wrenched out of a pantomime and put into a much more serious drama. Um, Kerensky is someone who I could, I could read and write about all day.